Hello and welcome to Miss Charlotte Astrology. My name is Charlotte, I'm a full-time working astrologer and on this channel I analyse the astrological charts of public figures. Well, very often they're celebrities or they're royals. Um, I do occasionally look into true crime um, and that's what I'm going to do today as I'll be examining the astrological chart of Nicole Brown, formerly known as Nicole Brown Simpson, who was married to O.J. Simpson. Uh, so not only was he her ex-husband, he was her murderer. And I say murderer because he did do it. Like the mount, there's a mountain of evidence against him, but uh, the glove didn't fit, so they had to acquit. He got off on a technicality. And um, it's just so sad that she is remembered for being this victim and what I wanted to do today was look at Nicole's chart and understand who she was and turn her from a two-dimensional character in this story this victim and turn her into a person again she deserves that so this is my tribute to Nicole Nicole Brown all right. Before I dive in, I want you guys to know, still 50% off my 60-minute uh, Zoom readings. So if you enjoy my content and you like the way I read charts, if you would like to meet up with me to discuss yours, you can do that 50% off. This sale will run out as soon as my May schedule is full. And yeah, so get on it now. And uh, I, if you don't want to do that, I do have 30% uh, off my 20-minute MP3 recorded readings, which is essentially just a recording of my voice. It's sent to you as an MP3 file to your email within 24 hours of the booked time and day. So, yeah, you you basically you choose the time and day that I fulfill the reading, that I get the reading done, and then it's sent to you within 24 hours of that time. Uh, and it's the best way to support me. I really appreciate it. And if you can't do any of that, if you would just like to give me a like, subscribe, and a comment, that's gold. Help me with the this algorithm. I'm trying to grow. I am my Mars in Capricorn is like placing every brick to, brick as perfectly as possible in order to build this wall or path to success. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, let's have a look at Nicole's chart. So she was a Taurus Sun with a Libra Moon and a Pisces rising. She had a lot of Cancer in her chart as well. Cancer Venus, Cancer was very sweet woman. I also wonder if she, you know, because I don't want to, I just, I don't want to just paint her as this like saintly figure. She was a person. I do think that she loved to take risks. I think there's some, there's something spicy about her. Mars in the fifth house, like, mm, it's a saucy placement. It's a risk taking placement. It's a sexy placement. I also think that with Lilith on her son. And I always talk about when Lilith is in a, in a conjunction with a personal placement, like you got to watch yourself with that because you can be a perpetual victim, not just of yourself, but to other people. This is, this is someone who was victimized. Like, obviously, obviously we know what happened to her, but, um, taken advantage of people with Lilith with their personal placements, especially the sun or the moon, like they, they can fall prey to very nefarious situations or people um yeah so this conjunction does bother me but it's in her second house as well so I'm wondering if she was not that great with money and I know Taurus is I mean, it's meant to be the sign where you're great with money but I wonder if she was a bit of a spendthrift like she enjoyed the luxurious life that OJ provided for her because she she was a waitress before um, she was a waitress when they met, you know, she didn't really have a career or a business as far as I'm, as far as I, uh, as I know, she, maybe she did, but I just, if I scroll out and we look at her mid heaven, it's in Sagittarius. So if had she, ha had she lived and survived this divorce and like, or su just survived, I feel like she would have been a great storyteller or some kind of like, um, she gives me like life coach energy. And the reason why is because Sagittarius is the sign of travel and higher learning. And, um, it's a bit of a teacher and the midheaven ruler is in her eighth house of <laughs> shadow work and secrets and abuse and psychic things. Like it's, so I'm, I'm wondering if she had lived, if she had lived through this, um, she probably would have been some kind of healer. I feel like like a storyteller, like written books and like 
I feel like she would have published something, you know, like it's very, it's a very interesting placement. Um, now if we look at her North node, so this is the destiny placement, North node in Libra is about partnership and it is in the seventh house. It's intercepted. So that's difficult, but, um, her whole destiny was to learn how to be in a cooperative partnership and also to have children because the moon is here and the moon is like your internal processing. It's the mother, it's the home, it's domestic sphere. So her destiny was to have children. Um, the interception is a bit bothersome though. It's almost like it's withheld from her. Like there's some struggles in reaching that. I mean, it couldn't have been, it couldn't have been easy to be, to have been like a functional mother and run a functional household given the very, you know, difficult home life that she had with OJ. Um, but yeah, that was literally her destiny to be a wife, to be a mother. I mean, Juno is here and to hopefully realize her genius. Pallas Athena is here. Like Pallas Athena is the genius, like realize in, in becoming a mother and a wife, she realized um, her creative genius. So I'm wondering if she was a really good, like, really I don't know she might have been really good at designing the home she might have, she had some like creative pursuits that she wanted to do within the home so I'm wondering about that and part of fortune is here as well like part of fortune is where you get fortune and getting married and being in partnership obviously with OJ is what got her there however I'm looking back at OJ's chart and I just read that his Neptune is on all of this and Neptune is like lack of boundaries Neptune is loss and sacrifice so that's what kind of colors this to, for me is like this makes it dark because normally I would I would look at this chart and be like wow what a beautiful destiny what a beautiful thing like learning to like surrender to another and learning to trust and learning how to be a wife and a mother like those are really beautiful things and find fortune within that and she did like part of fortune's here but then I remember that you know um OJ has his Neptune here and look what happened. Look what he did to her. Like, so it's beautiful North node, but yeah, I'm thinking about the synastry between them. It's, it, it changes, it changes all of that. Uh, she has Pluto on her descendant, Pluto, the planet of death and transformation. If that's on the descendant, that's not easy. Like these people have very transformative and difficult experiences in uh in partnership both romantic and platonic like it can in really intense friendships um potentially and i'm not accusing her of anything at all but um i'm wondering if there was some there was some friendships that did cross the line that did get because there i've heard some things about about the whole chris chris jenner she was married to uh robert kardashian i heard that there was there was some funny business going on with chris jenner and oj and Robert Kardashian and maybe Robert wasn't part of it. I feel like he's a bit straight laced, uh, but I feel like there's some, there's something here with, with partnership, with marriage, with friendship. Like there's just a, and also like she's got a Lilith here. She's got Lilith on her son. So I'm wondering if there was maybe a lack of boundaries in friendships, maybe sex and friendships were very intertwined. I have heard some things and I don't know if they're true. So I'm not going to obviously, like like lean into that too much but I, if that is true if that was true I, I it makes a lot of sense here it makes a lot of sense <sighs> and also with with the Mars and the fifth like that's someone who's very sexually experimental as well but at the same time because they are in cancer like sex and the moon moon and Mars are together in the same sign they're not in a conjunction but they are together um, sex and love are very intertwined for her. Like, I mean, I'm a Taurus placement. I always talk to Cancer Venuses, Cancer Marses, and they, 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 the, we, we share that. We're just like, yeah, if we sleep with someone, like we are like locked in and in love forever. Like, so yeah. I mean, if f fifth house is the house of leisure and pleasure. And if your Mars is in there, sex is part of that. Like it's part of that for everyone. But I think some like it's it might not be taken as seriously sometimes so I'm wondering how yeah if she had fun with this I mean more power to her whatever <laughs> um now let's have a look at some of these harsh harsh aspects so she's got her her Taurus son 
in an opposition to Jupiter. Jupiter's the husband and it is retrograde. And it's interesting because OJ also has his Jupiter in retrograde. Disappointing husband, disappointing marriages. She has it too. And then it squares off with Pluto in the seventh house. So what we're seeing is, and I count Jupiter, it's a semi-generational planet, right? It's in the sign for a year. So can we just count it as a generational planet? She's two gener generational planets that are squaring off. So her partnerships, this Pluto on the descendant, so her interactions with people, these transformative interactions with people right here, doesn't cooperate with Jupiter, which is the marriage. So maybe in her lifetime, and this is certainly true, she could have a jealous husband. Who are you with? Who are you talking to? And that squares off with her son. So it, it puts her down. She it's it's when you have oppositions and squares with your son like generational planets opposing or squared your son you are going to have you're going to have situations that are out of your control that make you feel bad like tell people telling you that you're not good enough that you're not worthy enough or like it's just really hard to to shine it can be really hard to shine and for her like she was next you know, in a partnership with a very shiny, powerful man. And she was like the supporting character to his one man show. Um, so the, the marriage certainly does look disappointing. Friendships look disappointing. I have no doubt in my mind that he alienated her from a lot of people. Um, because like Jupiter square Pluto. Yeah. Jupiter in the eighth house squaring Pluto on the descendant yeah like that does look like a really difficult marriage like a transformative marriage and beautiful in a lot of ways but a dangerous one potentially um yeah also sixth house she, this looks violent she's got Uranus in her sixth house that's someone that doesn't really have like a very orthodox regular normal routine uh and I, I heard she like really loved living like she she enjoyed and it's Leo. Leo is very hedonistic and glamorous. Like she really enjoyed being a lady, a lady that brunches. You know, who doesn't love that? I've, I've been a bitch at brunch. I love being a bitch at brunch. But I feel like she was a bitch at brunch and she like loved to hang out in the cafes. And if she wasn't working, why? Like, what, who wants to work? OK, <laughs> uh, I feel like she really enjoyed that. So she had a very kind of interesting life like she probably played a lot of sport or she like she just she just seems like someone that was very ex experimental in her everyday life um very loving mother I mean Venus in the fifth house like very much loves her children for sure um but if they were at school then she was probably really living living life uh I'm just having a look at where it was. Uranus is also squaring some things too. So Uranus squared Mercury, Neptune opposite Mercury. Mercury governs the body. Mercury Mercury is the mind, but it's also the body. It's those functions, right? So if Uranus and Neptune, that's – Uranus is chaos. I mean, Uranus in the sixth house is also trouble, like sudden ailments or like trouble with the body. And if it's squaring Mercury, which rules that sixth house, there is – sudden things that happen to the body that are unexpected and certainly Neptune opposed like there's some mental and physical health things Neptune in the eighth every time I see Neptune in the eighth for famous people they die in weird ways they die in, and I'm not saying that's going to happen to you if you've got Neptune in the eighth it's also a psychic placement but it is a bit of a disturbed placement it's not an easy placement it's not the, for the faint of heart but I'm looking at this t-square with Mercury and this eighth house Neptune, which is not easy, and this Uranus in the sixth house, like there's something happening to her that is negatively impacting her train of thought, her like her her bodily functions, like just very sudden things. And she was she was abused, she was beaten up on the regular. But also potentially, like they I mean was she into substances? Was she addicted to something? No hate on her if she was. Like, she was dealing with a lot of stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if she had some vices here that also, like, perpetuated, like, some poor mental health. Like, she's, yeah, I like that Mercury really, really, really difficult. Diff it's, it's very harshly placed, that Mercury. You know what's really sad about this? Her Mercury is really nicely aspected, though, by Saturn and Pluto, I feel like 
again, would have been a great storyteller, would have been a great motivational speaker if she had just gotten through, if she could have just made to her, made it to her 40s. Like, she really would have bloomed. She would have blossomed. It would have been beautiful. She would have so many stories to tell. Yeah. I really like her. I feel like, uh, don't get me wrong, there's some, there's some, like, there's a few toxic things. Like, we're all toxic to some extent. and But she was a very loving person. Like, very kind, very kind heart. Like, I love a Venus in Cancer. Although OJ has a Venus in Cancer, but remember, he's got that conjunction with Uranus and it's all squared off. It's all fucked up. So his Venus in Cancer is shit. Her Venus in Cancer, she just wants a cuddle. She just wants... Oh, and then there's this... And she's got this um, yeah, Saturn opposite Venus. I've heard some really nice things about her father because I've listened to her sister talk about her father and how the father was, he was so bereft. Of course he was. Uh, but I have heard, yeah, that he was a lovely guy. But I'm wondering if there's something else because women generally, right, women generally that have very good father figures, they don't get into marriages with shitty men like that's just so I'm wondering if there's something there because Saturn opposite Venus there's a push and a pull here between the authority and the structure the father figure and then what the heart really wants maybe her dad just didn't did her dad not like OJ because dad's not agreeing with her here and 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 Saturn squares the moon as well. She's got a T square with Saturn the father, the moon the mother, and Venus the heart. So like these two personal placements, they're not agreeing. It's almost like what she's attracted to, because Venus in Cancer, the what she's attracted to, it goes against what she needs. It 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 um there's a war between her value system and what she actually needs in a loving relationship. Oh, that's hard. And there's also Saturn here, which is disagreeing with how she runs her life and who she falls in love with. Like, Dad, Dad won't get off my back and Dad keeps saying that I married the wrong guy. I don't know if this is necessarily the case, but there's something here with her father and men and authority figures that is hurting her or neglecting her or there's something here can any does anybody know anything about the relationship with her with, which that she had with her dad because I hear nice things that he was a good man and he very well could have been a very good man don't get me wrong but there's some kind of dysfunction here and I can't pin pin I can't pinpoint it because obviously I don't know much about her life I'm just trying to understand why she entered this union and why she stayed in this marriage for so long like oof like she had kids obviously she had kids and she did eventually leave so more the power to her she eventually yeah she got out of that but oh if you know really shit is that she left him and she just escaped his clutches and then he he like he managed to kill her anyway like that's the saddest thing she was a really sweet lady Really, like, I can, like, I, 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 she was a really good person. And she, she would have been fun at brunch. I see her being, like, a, a just a really good time. Like, she's a fifth houser. <laughs> and she's a second houser. Like, she really loved the, like, she, she loved the lush things. She loved glamour and she loved, you know, like a warm blanket and she loved a really good cocktail. And she, like, she gives me the vibe of, like, let's, do you want to go get, do you want to play some drunk tennis? Like, let's do brunch and let's get drunk and let's play tennis. Like, I get that from her. Like, just, like, Taurus Sun, Libra Moon. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Cancer, Venus, and Mars, and then she's got this Uranus in the sixth house. That's a hedonistic woman. That's my girl. Like, she's cute. She's cute. Little, bit, <laughs> little, little, maybe, maybe a little bit too much destructive fun with this, but yeah, it's nice. It's very nice. I'm gonna do a sinistry chart between her and OJ, so we can look at their dynamic very soon. Um, but yeah, I hope I hope this has done her justice. Um, if any, if is there anyone out there that knew her, um, yeah, it would, like put like let me know in the comments. I would love to, you know, I love to I love to hear about um, uh, I love to hear about people that I've I've 
read for. Like if I if, when I read a chart and then I have someone that has known that person or knows that person, they contact me and they're like, oh my god, like she this person was exactly like you said. Like I love hearing that. Sometimes I do get oh that. <laughs> Sometimes uh, I do have people say, oh. Uh, <laughs> That was uh, that was just a bit too close for comfort, though. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, thank you so much, guys. Um, I really hope that this has done Nicole Brown some justice. And um, yeah, screw OJ. Ugh. I hope I hope OJ is like talking to God right now and getting a very harsh talking to. <sighs> and I hope Nicole is enjoying her cocktails in heaven on a pink cloud. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.